Hi, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining from. Uh, this is the partner briefing for WC2 Open Healthcare. Uh, so if you're if you're a partner, welcome. If you're not a if you're not a partner, uh, welcome as well. Uh, this applies to you as well. Um, so what we are going to cover in this session is basically WC2's healthcare vertical solution, which we have called Open Healthcare, uh, which is basically an API-driven healthcare integration platform. Uh, so as part of this, uh, there'll be two of us doing this session uh, and i'll do the intros in a bit so we'll go through what who wso2 is for for some of you who haven't come across wso2 very high level uh, we'll go through some of the product capabilities because that relates to the healthcare platform uh, then we'll go through what the requirement is for healthcare both in the us as well as whoops, switching let me switch back yeah both in the US as well as uh, other parts of the world as well. So this is US focused, but then this is applicable to uh, the rest of the globe as well. Uh, healthcare interoperability is a global challenge. Uh, and then we'll go into the actual architectural details and the actual implementation details of the platform. And we'll go into a, a demo as well before uh, closing up. Uh, there, there is a questions tab in the on your sidebar, so you any questions throughout the sessions, feel free to raise them. Uh, we'll we'll address questions either during the session or towards the end of the session, towards the end of the hour. Uh, and there'll be a survey at the end of the session. So if you have, uh, if you can respond to that survey, that'll be very helpful as well. And if you need any follow-ups, there's all the contact details uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, so let me switch to uh, who we are. Uh, so I'm Mifan, I'm the Vice President of Solutions Architecture, and I'm also heading the uh, global healthcare team as well, uh, the Open Healthcare Platform team, which is a newer initiative in WSO2. Uh, I'm based out of New York, New Jersey, uh, so it's morning for me. Uh, I also have Nirmal with me, who is a Senior Lead Solutions Engineer, and he's, who's also the Product Manager for uh, the Healthcare Solution. Uh, and uh, Nirmal was in the US and uh, I think two weeks back he, he traveled back to Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, so it's it's evening for him. Uh, and I'm guessing uh, a number of you are from different parts of the world as well. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay, so uh, let me quickly go into first the, the portfolio of WSO2. And I'm, I'm just gonna spend five minutes on this, right? Uh, uh, and again, if you have any questions, let us know and we can go into those details so one so wso2 is a global company uh, we were formed in 2005 uh, and, and we've been a middleware company for now a number of years now 15 years and running um, we have 650 plus uh, sorry uh, employees globally distributed our r d base is in colombo because that's an open source hub and we are an open source company as well with open source roots uh, so our r d base is in colombo majority uh, but then we are distributed across uh, Europe, Latin America, the US, Australia, New Zealand, uh, UK, uh, Asia Pacific, so on and so forth. Uh, we are an open source company, as I mentioned. So our underlying code base is open source. It's all Apache 2 license, which is a very business friendly license, uh, which, which makes it easier for partners and technology partners to work with us as well. But uh, and we have around 550 plus subscription customers. Uh, so these are customers who buy into WSO2, who get the value proposition of WSO2 subscription. And, and this number is growing uh, year by year, quarter by quarter. Um, and, and we have a global presence, as I mentioned as well. Uh, we have an extensive partner network as well. And uh, some of you are already partners of WSO2. Some of you are potential partners of WSO2, and, and we can get into that discussion up next. Um, so very quickly, the, uh, this diagram shows the underlying platform uh, that WSO2 builds. Uh, and and, the, and we, we consider these the core technology required to build any digital transformation project or, or to launch any digital transformation initiative. Right? So if you if you look at usually the integration projects, you have an API management component, which includes API gateways, uh, micro gateways, if you want to go into like a microservices style deployment, marketplaces so that you can monetize and productize your APIs either externally or internally, et cetera. And then very 
tightly coupled or loosely coupled with API management is enterprise integration. Right? So where you connect to backend systems, backend source systems, uh, streaming systems, or, or asynchronous or synchronous uh, systems, so on and so forth. Right? So there's many implications of that. And, and this is regardless of the domain. Right? It is an orthogonal tool set. So regardless of whether it's API management or it, so whether, regardless of whether it's retail or healthcare or finance, for example, uh, you will use these tool sets or these components to connect to these different systems and expose APIs. Security is a critical component when you start exposing APIs. Uh, that covers API security, the whole OpenID Connect, Auth2, uh, the, the security for your services and your web services, et cetera but also security for your identity uh, access management purposes as well. So consumer identity access management or CIAM, uh, enterprise identity access management in the back end, uh, the whole federation and bring your own identity protocols, consent management, so on and so forth as well. Again, orthogonal tool set, independent of the vertical, and it's very relevant to healthcare as well. And, and we'll go into these details. Uh, so WSO2 products, we've, we've had these products for a long time. These power like really large mission critical deployments globally today, uh, from the Fidelities to the Boeings to, to uh, many large organizations. And uh, these, these are really highly rated products as well. Like for example, the recent Forrester quadrant came out, uh, the Forrester wave. And as part of that, WC2 was named as a leader in API management. So one of the four leaders in API management. And if you can go to the website and, and check out the Forrester report, which is available there to download. Right? Uh, so, so that's a really important base when it comes to even healthcare solutions, because we naturally build on top of these world-class products. Right? So you inherently inherit all of these capabilities from the underlying platform. And that's a huge value proposition when it comes to healthcare. Um, again, this is a public webinar. There's a number of partners and customers and we'll be posting this public. Uh, so if you go into our website, the healthcare solutions page, uh, you can see a number of customer case studies, testimonials, uh, summit presentations, so on and so forth. Uh, so go check them out. There's a lot of interesting content out there. We have, during our past 10 to 15 years, we have worked with large healthcare organizations in the US as well as globally, ranging from hospitals uh, like providers, uh, healthcare insurance companies and, and payers, uh, the vendors in the space like Cerna, Epic, so on and so forth, like Cerna is a customer of ours. Uh, and, and then we basically have the, the technology vendors in the space as well. We have the pharmacy benefit managers, the pharmaceutical companies, so on and so forth. Right? So there are many different types of healthcare companies within the healthcare vertical itself. It's a huge vertical and, and we work with multiple uh, companies in that space. So uh, again, I'm not listing down specific names, but you, you can go to the website and, and there's a number of logos listed there. And of course, there's a number of logos that we cannot mention as well. All right. So this session today is to talk about the WSO2 Open Healthcare Platform. Uh, in a nutshell, this is a platform to enable healthcare interoperability and integration to backend systems. So what does interoperability and integration mean? In a healthcare ecosystem, you have multiple systems. Uh, like if you take, if you are a hospital, for example, if you're a provider, you will work with multiple EMR systems, electronic medical record systems, multiple EHR systems, multiple claim management systems, pharmaceutical systems, you will have to share information with pharmacies, share information with uh, third-party applications, with laboratories, uh, so on and so forth, with specialists. So there's multiple uh, interaction points, right? So getting all that information together, getting it in a timely manner, sticking to specific standards, being able to identify patients, like patients are represented across different systems in different ways, being able to identify those patients, uh, being able to expose APIs in a certain format, so on and so forth. So there's multiple challenges when it comes to interoperability. But at the end of the day, you're trying to satisfy the main stakeholder, who is the patient in this whole uh, domain. Right? So this is just a snapshot of our website. Just go to wsoto.com slash healthcare and, and you'll arrive at the healthcare page and you can try out 
the solution or you can schedule a full demo and then we can schedule the uh, we can uh, do the full demo for your healthcare team as well uh, let me go down to the next slide so there are two parts to this solution uh, one is of course if you are based in the us or if you are a partner serving the us market the healthcare market you would have come across the cms 9115f rule uh, if you're not based in the us or if you're not serving the us market healthcare interoperability is still very valid all of the concepts that we present here is still very valid for whatever region you are in as well because hl7 and fire and all these capabilities that i'll be talking about are global standards they're not us standards but i'll talk about the us need first uh, in us the center for medicare and medicaid which falls under the us government under the health and human services department came up with a rule in march this year saying that there are certain types of apis that need to be exposed uh, by july 2021 right? the original date was january 2021 and it was pushed to july 2021 i'm not going to go into details about the rule but in a nutshell it says that if you're a patient your information needs to be accessible and needs to be provided as an api to whomever you approve so so if i'm a patient and if i have a an app or an apple watch which can aggregate my uh, health data and show me like analysis of my health data and, and the movement of where i've been going and and how i've been progressing so on and so forth so that app should be able to access the health data from the health insurance companies as well as the uh, healthcare providers so the insurance companies and the hospital so so in a nutshell that's what it really means right and and this ruling is by july 2021 so there's a lot of opportunity for technology companies and partners. So which is why we're doing this session, because we want partners uh, and different types of partners, of course, to join us in this journey. And there's a uh, there's a urgent requirement in the US. But again, as I mentioned, this is a very critical need all around the world as well, because the challenges are the same. It's just that the US has a regulatory deadline. That's that's the only difference. Uh, so what we are presenting or what we are planning to pitch is fire based api integration for your health plan now what does fire mean f-h-i-r uh, you pronounce it fire so that's fast healthcare interoperability resources uh, that falls under the hl7 organization right? the health layer 7 organization which is an international standards body and fire is also an international standard uh, so us is basically adopting that they have they have derived that and they have built certain additions on top of that and that's what's applicable in the us healthcare market so bottom line we are providing an open healthcare solution it provides a one-stop solution for healthcare insurers to start with to build a cms compliance strategy in three to six months but at the same time this also applies to hospitals and and providers and basically vendors as well and i'll explain how that happens uh, in this diagram. So if you take a typical stakeholder map, right, uh, as you can see, the smiley face guy there or girl there is the patient, right? And, and the objective of everyone else in the domain is to make that patient happy, right? And then that's, that's, that's what everyone strives towards. Uh, and, and there are different ways a patient interacts with the healthcare system. And this is again, a US picture, but this is very relevant to other countries. It varies very, very slightly, right? For example, if I'm a patient, I would go to a hospital, we call them providers, and you get a service from the hospital, right? And the hospital treats you. In most scenarios, you will go, you will have a relationship with an insurance company, a payer, right? And in the US, these are mostly private insurance companies. If you're a senior or if you're low income, you will have like Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, if you're special groups, you'll have like CHIP, QH, QHP, so on and so forth, different plans. Uh, in, in some countries and in the US as well, there is the government as a payer as well, or you have private payers as well. So different types of insurance companies. And the insurance companies pays the provider on your behalf. Uh, this provider is served by vendors. Right? So if you take a hospital, hospital might have different electronic health record systems like Cerner, for example, where the actual health data is stored. Right, the patient data is stored right? so they will serve the hospitals there might be claim management systems that are used by payers as well 
and at the same time there'll be other suppliers like pharmaceutical suppliers equipment suppliers to the hospitals and the payers mostly to the hospitals and there'll be pharmacy benefit managers sitting between the suppliers and the providers as well or between the suppliers and the patients as well and then of course there'll be government there'll be state government federal government national government who offers sometimes healthcare, sometimes the healthcare insurance, uh, the regulations, etc. So there are different areas and different stakeholders who come into this picture. And we see interoperability at different levels, right? Uh, immediately in the US, the, you can see that small WSO2 logo there with a heart. So immediately in the US, uh, the, the solution can be deployed for healthcare insurance companies. Uh, it is very applicable to hospitals as well, so it can be deployed in hospitals. It's very applicable to vendors because they store patient information, right? so it can be deployed at vendors. Pharmacy benefit managers and pharmacies and suppliers also sometimes deal with uh, patient information or other kind of information, so it can be deployed there. Uh, life sciences organizations, uh, so on and so forth. Right? Many organizations have this applicability. And again, it's not always a regulatory requirement. If you are doing some kind of interoperability between two healthcare organizations, and since the FHIR HL7 standard is already there, it makes a lot of sense to be futuristic and implement it using the FHIR standard, right? And, and that's the bottom line, right? Because the regulation is going to come to your region someday or the other, and then it helps these organizations be ready and prepared and use actual standards, which will speed up development time. Okay, uh, last diagram before I hand over to Nirma. Uh, so this is the big picture diagram of what we are talking about. Right? So as I mentioned, there's two parts here. In the US, if you look at the US, it talks about the regulation side. But if you talk about the US itself, you have to look beyond the regulation. So regulation is just one thing right, where you expose certain APIs in a certain format to the outside world. Right? But looking beyond regulation, you have to look at the API monetization, productizing APIs, building a platform model so that others can basically collaborate and build newer business models around that, uh, building an application ecosystem uh, around uh, around the whole API uh, environment, so on and so forth. Right? So there's, there's multiple things there. Let me go through this diagram a bit. So if you see this orange box in the middle, that's in a sense WC2 Open Healthcare. Right? It consists of capabilities such as the gateway, which enables this fire server. So fire server means being able to expose APIs, fire compliant APIs uh, via our gateway. It has the developer portal, which, which allows you to pick and choose which, dev, uh, which fire APIs to consume. Uh, there is also a separate publisher portal, which lists down all of the uh, uh, international standard APIs, right? So like for example, if you want a patient API that's already available in the portal, so you can basically pick the patient API, maybe explanation of benefit API, uh, drug formulary API, etc., and pick them and tick them and say that I'm going to expose these, and they automatically generate the connections and the connectors and get exposed uh, in the developer portal. Right? So everything is available as accelerators. Uh, obviously, OpenID Connect Auth2 is supported. Uh, we have a full IAM platform within this as well. Uh, that also means you have full consent management capabilities uh, available as well. And these APIs are consumed by what is called smart on fire apps, which is also uh, and uh, which is also a standard compliant way of consuming uh, APIs. In the back end, you have various integration accelerators. Uh, you have the EMR EHR connectors. You have the fire data mapping connectors where you can drag and drop and create your connections. Uh, in most cases, you might not have to do uh, advanced connections, but if you have to, you can go into that level and basically drag and drop and do the connections. And you can even go into code level and uh, build your connections as well. Uh, there are the accelerators, which basically allow you to very quickly translate from one format to the other or from the same format to the, uh, the same format. There are validators and testing capabilities for you to basically uh, figure out whether the payload is valid, uh, whether this is tested, whether this is accurate, so on and so forth. And then of course you have analytics that covers everything else. Uh, at the southern end here is the integrations. Right? You have to integrate to multiple data sources. Usually it's not a single data source. Usually it's not as simple as just connecting to one system and getting all the information out. Right? 
so you might have EMRs, EHRs like Cerner, Epic, all scripts, so on and so forth. Uh, you might have data sitting in databases, so health data sitting in one, one or many databases or data sources, uh, in different services, in cloud apps, in SaaS apps, in different hospitals or different insurance companies as well. So you need to pull information that way. Uh, and then you basically also might have these wearable devices now, like the Apple, the new Apple Watch, right? Series 6 exposes like ECG information. Uh, Google's Fitbit project has a lot of information. So there's a lot of wearable projects and sensors and IoT coming into play as well. And there'll be a lot of integrations in, in that aspect too, right? So, so that's the bigger picture. So this, this picture speaks a thousand words, really. Uh, and then you can spin it either way, but but uh, basically you can go into a lot of details with this picture right um, so again just to summarize this applies as a regulatory requirement uh, this also looks beyond the regulation in the us and it also handles or addresses general interoperability in the healthcare domain and modernization in the healthcare domain right uh, this is the this is my last slide and then i'll hand over to nirmal so what are the partnership opportunities? Because the audience here is a partner audience. And I'm just checking, yeah, we have a number of attendees as well. So, so basically there are different types of opportunities here. And you, you would have seen this already. You might be working with uh, healthcare customers already uh, from a technology perspective, from a services perspective, from a consultancy perspective, multiple levels, right? And you might be SIs, global SIs, OEM uh, vendors, uh, technology vendors, so on and so forth, right? So we see multiple approaches. One is, of course, from a technology angle and another from a services angle. So technology, we are looking at partners who can resell the solution. So you either embed the solution into your offering and resell it as an OEM. We have very successful OEM relationships with multiple partners, either in healthcare or in other industries. Uh, or you, if you are in a special region and you can add value onto that or simply resell the solution we have the whole value added reseller model as well right? so you can sign up as value added resellers uh, and resell the solution and there are different ways you can package and add value on top of the solution uh, or you can join up as integration partners as well so whenever you go to customers you decide okay this is the place that ws2 healthcare would work and you would pitch open healthcare either as a reselling agreement or as a direct agreement with ws2 and then you would provide the services around that, right? So there's a lot of opportunity from a technology perspective, uh, but we also see a lot of technology partnerships out there, especially if you are an EMR, EHR vendor, or some kind of a vendor serving hospitals and uh, insurance companies and pharmacies and so on and so forth, then you can build uh, on top of our products, either the whole product, a holistic view, or you can take certain building blocks out of that and use them to build as well. And we will continue to build the rest of the roadmap out. Right? One of the advantages there is we, you can influence our roadmap and, and we'll continue to uh, cater to that roadmap. There is a huge services play here as well. Uh, of course, uh, the CMS rule has to be implemented in a certain period of time. There's a deadline by July, 2021. Uh, analysts have a view that it's going to take like three to six months, so on and so forth to implement this. So there's a lot of implementation services that are out there. So, so you can basically bring WS2 in and you can do the implementation services. Uh, and then when it comes to that stage, when WS2 goes in to different places, we will introduce you as implementation services partners as well. Right? Uh, and then of course there are consultancy services where you'd go in, you do, do just the design part or just the consultancy part and, and then leave the implementation to someone else as well. Right? So again, a lot of opportunities for partners. Uh, just go to the, maybe go to the WSO2 partners page and there's a lot of information there. Or at the end of this session as well, we have all the links and the contact details. Just contact us uh, and, and we'll be happy to chat. Uh, again, time is of the essence here, right? So, so we, we want to get this done quickly and getting it, uh, get it rolling quickly. All right, uh, Nirmal, let me stop there. I'll pause my screen and I'll hand it over to you. Right, so then you can start uh, presenting. So, yeah, yeah. Have I, I paused have... my screen? Oh, this, this is your screen? Okay, cool. Yes, yes, right, uh, okay.
Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So let's look at the uh, solution architecture of this uh, solution. So if when you are talking to the payers or to the providers, uh, you have to uh, basically uh, you know uh, design a solution. So when it comes to fire based uh, architectures there are two main architectural patterns uh, one is the fire api facade uh, where you know you have the source data systems and then you transform the source data into the fire format in uh, near real time uh, when there's an api request through a fire server you basically go back to the uh, source systems uh, you know uh, collect uh, the da necessary data and then transform the, uh, the different data formats into the fire format and then uh, send a response uh, send a fire response back to the client so that's the fire api facade uh, you can use this uh, uh, solution pattern where when the, when uh, the data that you are exchanging is uh, smaller and the number of source systems that you have to deal with is uh, considerably few number, uh, then you can do the transformations real time without any issue, without having a, a drastic uh, latency. So the other approach that we've seen in the industry currently is, uh, you can implement a fire repository based uh, fire server. So the, you know, this is not real time as the name implies, uh, you know, you'd probably have a slightly delayed data slightly outdated data but the uh, this will help you to build the uh, fire apis and uh, make your fire apis uh, much uh, responsive compared to the real time uh, you know fire apis so why it's you know how it happens is you basically have source systems and there are periodical tasks uh, those would connect to the source systems and then build the fire uh, resources and then store them in a, a database of your choice and then uh, when there's a fire request uh, this uh, the fire server will basically fetch the data from the fire repository and uh, you know, obtain the fire resources create the fire bundles and then response respond back to the uh, client so as you can see, since there's a periodical task here, uh, you know, based on the task duration, there will, you know, the data that are in the fire repository will be uh, slightly outdated. But that's an acceptable uh, uh, latency when it comes to uh, bulk exchanging uh, bulk uh, data, as well as you know, exchanging uh, healthcare data. Even in the CMS regulation, uh, you know, they don't expect you to, you know you always give the real-time data so you know, it's fine to have a uh, one one day delay uh, when it comes to decline uh, to the or when it comes to keeping your data up to date so let's see how you can use ws open healthcare uh, in order to implement each of these uh, main architectural patterns so when it comes to fire api facade pattern uh, what you can do is you can place WS2 Open Healthcare uh, between the source systems and the clients. So, uh, WS2 Open Healthcare can be used to transform uh, your, uh, you know, connect to your uh, source systems and then transform these different uh, data formats. And those can be XML JSON, XL7, or any other uh, proprietary format as well, and transform them into the uh, fire format and then uh, uh, expose the fire server. If you recall the diagram that uh, the reference architecture that we find uh, uh, explained, uh, basically that, uh, that can be placed here and then uh, you can expose uh, fire APIs through the fire server within the WS2 Open Healthcare platform. And what about the uh, fire repository based uh, architecture? So in order to implement this, again, you can use WS2 Open Healthcare, uh, not just to uh, build the fire repository, not just to uh, expose a fire server, but also to build the fire repository. So uh, we have the necessary connectors that we have built uh, to basically uh, connect to source systems and transform the data into fire 
and then store them in uh, MongoDB. So currently we have support to MongoDB uh, as the uh, uh, NoSQL database, but uh, there's, there's a plan to implement or uh, support other uh, relational databases as well. And uh, once you build the fire repository uh, in the MongoDB, you can basically deploy uh, another set of uh, WS2 Open Healthcare instances that will expose this repository as a fire uh, cell and it will expose whatever the fire APIs you want to expose and uh, you know all the search operations uh, will be uh, fetched from the uh, repository and uh, executed and also uh, you know you can uh, basically uh, build fire bundles using the WS2 Open Healthcare and respond multiple uh, fire resources together. So in order to achieve uh, these uh, you know, uh, use cases, we have uh, built a several healthcare accelerators. So the first accelerator is uh, to generative uh, fire data transformation connectors. So if you are familiar with the uh, fire specification, uh, there's an international standard. And under the international standard, there are different uh, layers of uh, resources. So there's foundation layer, base layer, clinical, uh, financial, etc. Uh, we have basically uh, built uh, connectors, fire data transformation connectors from XML to JSON. If, if you have any custom XML or any custom JSON, uh, we can uh, transform those data into the fire format uh, and build any of these fire resources. So uh, it's a it's a matter of filling uh, form kind of uh, interface and uh, you know giving the edge parts or mapping the adjacent parts and uh, you don't you no longer need to write uh, you know very lengthy XSLTs and transform your data into this complex uh, format. So we have the auto-generative uh, capability. Uh, you know, if there's a new specification tomorrow, uh, and if there's a new fire resource tomorrow, we can basically easily build uh, the fire necessary fire connector and provide it to you, since we have a tool that that is capable of auto generating these connectors. So uh, again, if you're familiar in the US uh, healthcare uh, sector, and there are different uh, implementation guides that are already available. Uh, DaVinci uh, Fair Data Exchange, uh, US Core, uh, carrying a uh, uh, blue dot button. Uh, so we have support to all these, uh, all the resources that are you know, defined in these uh, implementation guides as well. And then we have uh, another set of accelerators that will help you to convert HL7V2 messages into the FIRE format automatically. So uh, in HL7, they basically, uh, you know, having another implementation guide that will help or that will basically define the mappings from HL7 V2 message format to fire. So what we have done is we have used that, uh, used the uh, mapping provided there. It's uh, like a spreadsheet that they have provided. We've used that and we've built a set of connectors that will help you to transform any HL7 mes message. So when it comes to HL7 message, there are different segments. So you can convert each of those segments into the corresponding fire resources. So uh, you, you just have to use this uh, connector and define what are the fire resources you want to uh, get out of this HL7 message. Then uh, we'll be uh, uh, bundling these two fire resources together and emit a fire bundle. So for all the well-known HL7v2 message types, we have uh, the support to auto-generate the fire resources. And if you have a custom uh, HL7 segment, uh, it is very easy for us to uh, support that as well and provide you the uh, necessary connector uh, so that you can uh, you know, transform even the custom HL7 segments into the corresponding fire resources.
then uh, if you are dealing uh, with uh, a, you know a typical healthcare uh, provider you you'd you probably have a requirement to convert xml json any custom xml json into excel 7 v2 as well so in order to accomplish this we have a visual data mapping uh, available so uh, we again we provide you the uh, pre-built hl7 message formats to all the well-known hl7 message uh, types and then you can input the schema of your custom xml or json and then you can uh, drag and drop and visually data map uh, you can of course add uh, different operations and transform the uh, data when you are mapping as well then uh, you know all these uh, transformations all these uh, connections uh, will be made through a uh, integration studio uh, which is a low code uh, integration uh, tool in experience uh, you have the drag and drop uh, ui experience where you have a set of mediators connectors available uh, in uh, the palettes and you can drag and drop them to the uh, 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 canvas and build your integration or the mediation flows mm -hmm. uh, and you know that's form-based uh, approach where you can select uh, or provide the xml its parts uh, json parts to uh, convert uh, or build your uh, you know, fire messages and also one thing i forgot to tell is the uh, the studio supports uh, testing uh, running uh, debugging all these uh, features that you that your developers will uh, see uh, in a typical uh, uh, studio uh, development environment so everything is tested in one solution so, so that you can be productive your developers can be productive when they implement uh, the uh, you know solutions and uh, then we have auto generative fire api definitions again for all the fire resources we have uh, pre-built fire api definitions so when it comes to api definitions there are uh, there are two main uh, standards right now there's this swagger definitions that's a slightly older way of defining an api and then you have the uh, latest open api specification so slightly better way of defining APIs. And we have an API hub uh, that will basically uh, provide you the access to all these uh, API definitions. And you can uh, you know, select, uh, drill down based on the uh, implementation guide as well. And what uh, does it contain? Uh, it contains all the uh, REST API operations uh, that the fire specification mandates and also the search parameters when it comes to the uh, search operation uh, will be uh, auto populated into the uh, API definition. So it's just a matter of importing whatever the fire APIs you want and then uh, you know, bootstrapping your uh, open healthcare platform. And once you publish these uh, fire APIs, there are there's a need for a developer portal, which is the place where your third party application developers will come uh, and search and discover the APIs, uh, the five APIs. Uh, so they, they'll also be able to read the documentation, uh, build a forum uh, and communicate with your developers as well. And most important, importantly, uh, they, they'll be able to generate a client ID and secret uh, both to credentials that are required uh, from by the applications in order to generate access tokens or to access tokens or the JWT tokens uh, that will uh, you know, allow them to invoke the FI APIs. On top of these uh, FI APIs, you can enforce uh, rate limiting policies, uh, monetization policies, as well as uh, fine grain access control. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, the developer portal is free brandable. So if you are if you are providing a solution to a healthcare provider or a payer, uh, they can rebrand. You can rebrand uh, uh, the uh, developer portal to fit uh, that solution. 
And in, in a snapshot, uh, these are all the connectors we have. Uh, in addition to what I've already uh, explained, we have the ability to auto-generate the fire capability statement. So you don't have to worry about writing the capability statement by hand. Uh, once you use the WS2 Open Healthcare solution, we'll automatically generate the uh, capability statement slash metadata endpoint. And then uh, uh, it, it will be a fully compliant fire server. And we uh, support OpenID Connect both two, uh, and we are OpenID certified. And we have the capability to support H12 as well if you are dealing with uh, billing uh, uh, healthcare billing uh, 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 systems. We can use the H12 uh, fe features that we have. And also, uh, we have connectors to uh, Cerner Epic EMR systems. And we are currently working on providing uh, support to Athena Health, all strips, uh, and other more widely used. Uh, EMR uh, systems. So as the uh, you know, final set of slides, I'll like to uh, walk you through a demo, end-to-end -end demo, uh, where we are accessing a smart on fire application. And then uh, you know, as a patient, uh, I'll be accessing the smart on fire application and then trying to uh, you know, inquire my claim data uh, on behalf of so the application will uh, query the uh, claim data on behalf of me as the uh, patient or the member. So this is basically the carrying uh, implementation guide use case. So the demo setup is something like this. We have DWS to open healthcare platform and there's a custom database. So you, you can see the structure here. And uh, this is the Smart on Fire application. So let's switch to the demo. Uh, so this is the demo application. This is a smart on fire application, and uh, there's a login uh, button. Uh, so when I click as a member, when I click the login, this will redirect me to the uh, authentication server. And uh, in this case, we are using the WS2 authentication server. So I have to enter my, my credentials. And once I enter the credentials, I'll be asked to uh, provide the uh, consent. So this is uh, part of providing the consent. So uh, as a member, uh, I am granting the permission to the uh, application to access my data or inquire my data from the fire server and uh, you know, show it to me, right? Uh, so this consent that I'm granting right now can be revoked. Uh, by logging into the uh, consent management uh, application, and uh, I uh, can, you know, revoke any of my uh, uh, any of the consent that I've granted to any of the applications at any any uh, time that I want. So I'm granting the consent, and then uh, the application basically recognized my patient ID by uh, connecting to the uh, fire server. Since it's this is a demo application, we have we are showing uh, the access tokens, the ID tokens that were returned by the fire server as well. And uh, when I click show all, uh, this will uh, connect or send a fire uh, API request to the uh, underlying fire server that is uh, written on WS token healthcare platform. And as you can see, we are using fire R4 explanation of benefit fire resource. And we are passing a query parameter patient equals one, search parameter patient equals one. And this will return a bundle. So in this case, we are dealing with XML, but uh, you can uh, get a JSON uh, easily as well by setting the accept, proper accept header. And uh, as you can see here, it's a fire bundle. Uh, so uh, when I click on a specific uh, claim ID, a specific uh, explanation of benefit, I'll be, you know, the application will send a fire request to the explanation of benefit fire resource and fetch will fetch the, uh, uh, you know, explanation of benefit uh, that has ID one. Uh, and this is the uh, response that was received uh, from the uh, fire server. So this is basically the full end-to-end -end, uh, scenario 
the IASA member giving the uh, consent uh, to uh, the application, uh, to the Smart on Fire application. And then uh, the Smart, of, Smart on Fire application accessing the uh, Fire API, Fire Server on behalf of me, and then showing me the, uh, all the responses or the claims uh, or the explanation of benefits that I am entitled to. So this is the sequence diagram as well. So we'll be sharing the slide decks with you so that we can uh, refer to them uh, later. Uh, so before I hand it over back to Amifan, uh, I just like to add a few more things. So as a partner, uh, you will basically get exclusive access to all our accelerators. So uh, if, uh, currently our accelerators is like built in house and uh, it's not publicly available. So uh, as a partner, if you are interested, you can definitely apply provide all the accelerators to you and uh, also you you as a partner get gets the ability to influence our roadmap and if you if you are talking to a payer or a provider if there's a need to a new feature uh, or uh, an improvement in our platform we be uh, uh, happy to prioritize this prioritize uh, that particular feature and uh, you know give our best effort to uh, provide it as soon as possible as well. Um, right, so I think Mifana, you can take session over. Um, okay, yeah, thanks, thanks Nirma. So thanks, thanks for that. And uh, so I, I guess uh, this is one of the pages Nirma was referring to where we have all the resources listed. Uh, the first is of course the healthcare solutions page uh, on that page, we we have a number of good content, including a white paper that we recently wrote, uh, which covers the, the requirements for CMS in the US and what's the implementation details and how we can help uh, achieving those uh, regulatory requirements. Uh, there is also the links to the, the demo and the tryout uh, section, so you can click on them and you can spin uh, a tenant up for yourself. Uh, and there's also we can also set up a full demo for you or your full healthcare team. Uh, and 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 basically uh, we have a couple of webinars as well uh, and a couple of good customer content. So you can basically look at that as well. Uh, Nirma, can we go to the last slide? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So so basically uh, that's it. Uh, sorry, did you switch? Oh yeah. Yeah. There you go. That, that's basically it from the two of us. Um, so to summarize, I think uh, there is a great opportunity around healthcare interoperability globally. Uh, this is a global challenge and a global requirement uh, and a global need to, to make healthcare better for us. Really, right? Everyone's a patient, everyone's a stakeholder. Right? Uh, so there's a human story behind this, which is, which is really good. Um, so this is the time where technology and where API management and integration and CIAM and interoperability as a whole can help drive healthcare innovation. And there is a huge need to drive healthcare innovation as well. In the US, there is an expectation that this is going to transform the industry. This is going to uh, really rapidly drive innovation in the healthcare space. It's going to create a whole application ecosystem around APIs because now once information is available, the next step is applications, right? So the whole application ecosystem is going to launch uh, and, and then there is going to be like disruptive uh, transformation in this industry, right? So, so it's, it's a good time to get into uh, healthcare innovation and healthcare interoperability. Uh, WSO2 has proven itself with multiple customers in multiple domains. Uh, we have like some really large mission critical, very highly rated deployments, uh, and we can bring the same expertise to healthcare, and we've done that already. Uh, but then we don't want to go to market alone. Uh, we want to go to market with the experts who are our partners, right? And who've done this before, who have experience around this uh, on the technology side, on the services side, on the consultancy side, so on and so forth. So uh, if you already work in this space or if you're interested in getting into the space uh, and if you already have a healthcare team focused on this space specifically uh, let us know and if you need a specific session for that team we can basically uh, do a session for the team 
Uh, but if you have any other questions, just feel free to reach out. There are di different links here. Uh, both of our LinkedIn uh, profile pages are also there, so you can connect with us. Right? Uh, there is a survey following this. So if you can fill that survey and that asks some of the questions as well, that will be helpful. And as I mentioned, uh, WSO is also aggressively going out in this market and there is a lot of services opportunities there. Right? So, uh, so it's a give and take. Right, uh, so we help you, you help us. Uh, so if you want, if you're interested in getting involved, just let us know. And if you if you think there are others in your team who, who are, would be interested in this, uh, we'll be sharing the recording and the slides as well. So you can uh, share it with them. Uh, okay, is there any questions? If there's any questions, uh, we can handle them. And uh, if not, uh, basically you can, uh, you can fill in the survey and then we can take it from there. Uh, we do know a lot of you who are, who are attendees here because you're already partners so so again we can have uh, independent discussions as well and we have been having discussions with uh, most of you as well uh, all right so i think that's about it thanks again nirmal thanks brian for organizing this and thank you everyone for your time we have five minutes we'll give you five minutes back of your valuable time all right thank you have a great day